Hey guys, Rob here at 3D Printscape. So today I'm gonna to show you the process to replace the CB1 board in the uh, Pad 7 with the CB2 board. Uh, the process is pretty much the same if you wanna use the CM4 board as well. You just have to get different firmware and there's a couple switches you have to flip on the back of the actual Pad 7. Um, but both of those are comparable upgrades, uh, but I had the CB2 board, so I went ahead and used that. And it's pretty much a drop-in replacement. You just gotta swap out the firmware. Uh, for the upgrade, you don't really need much, just a couple Allen wrenches, two different sizes, uh, which you'll be able to see on the back of the Pad 7. Uh, some tweezers would be good to have, uh, mainly for just removing the antenna and plugging it back into the new board. And um, one thing I did want to mention is I got a aftermarket, or I guess it's a Big Tree Tech heat sink, uh, similar to the one that's on their uh, Pi 2, which I have here. Um, but it doesn't necessarily cover the entire back like the original heat sink did for the CB1. Uh, they did make a note in the documentation that they are making a heat sink for the CB2, uh, but it's not out yet. So the end result is you have a little bit of a gap around the heat sink here, and it's not quite as clean as the original, uh, but it works just fine. And that would be the same thing too if you're using the CM4 board. But overall, there is a pretty nice performance increase going from the CB1 uh, board, which I have right here, to the CB2. Uh, I'll show you a couple of side-by-sides. Uh, I did a couple uh, videos just prior to uh, swapping out the board. So basically just starting up it, showing you the time difference, and then going between some of the menu items. But it definitely is a lot more responsive, and it feels a lot smoother to use to me. And it's going to help if you're um, adding more than one or two printers to it or if you're trying to do anything else besides just run your printers with the Pad 7, because there are a lot of different options that it does support, uh, which is one of the things that makes it a really good buy. I wish they did put the CB2 board in here to begin with versus the CB1. Uh, maybe they'll add a option where you can get it with the CB2 stock, because uh, I think that would be a nice upgrade. I would pay a little bit extra just to get that from the factory. But overall, even with the cost of switching from the CB1 to the CB2 board, it's still very comparable with the other competitors and uh, you end up with a lot better system, at least in my opinion. Um, but with that, let's go ahead and get started. If you have any questions about what I covered here or would like to see any other videos, uh, just go ahead and leave a comment below or join us on Discord. Thanks. All right guys, so here's the Big Tree Techs uh, GitHub page for the CB2 board. Um, this is really covering the CB2 and their Pi 2. It's, it's just the same chipset. Um, so all, everything you need uh, to actually flash the firmware is going to be here. Uh, so if you go over down to releases, uh, go and click on that, it will bring you up with your latest release or previous ones. You'll just want to download the release here uh, that's for Clipper, assuming that's what you want to run. If you just want to put a Linux distro on there, download the Debian one with minimal. Uh, this will just give you a base Linux install that you can work with and build whatever from there. Uh, but in this video, I'm running Clipper, so I'm just going to use the Clipper install. So I go ahead and download that. And then you'll need to flash that to the SD card. Now, if you look at the user manual, they recommend uh, the Bellina Etcher. I use this for the CB1 board and the image flashed successfully. Uh, but with the CB2, I tried multiple SD cards and multiple different versions of uh, the actual build and it kept failing at the end about the 98-99% mark due to uh, validation. Uh, so I ended up going back to Rufus, which I use pretty regularly anyways. Uh, so that's what I'm going to use in this video to show you. You can just go to the website and download it. I'll put the link to both the GitHub page and this website in the description below. But you just go here and go down to download. Uh, don't hit the start or any of these other ones. Those are just ads. Uh, so yeah, so go to download it and then you'll launch it. And then from there, assuming you have your SD card plugged into the computer, you'll see a device here for your SD card. And then you wanna select the image, which is gonna be the one we just downloaded from GitHub. So you'll select that. And then just go ahead and hit start and it's gonna run through the process. It's telling you that it's gonna erase the SD card so everything on there will be destroyed. So go ahead and hit okay. And then it's gonna delete the partition, write the image, verify the image. All right, so that took about six and a half minutes to finish. Uh, but now that that's done, you can go ahead and uh, take the SD card out of the computer and put it in the pad seven, then power that on. And then it should boot up into your normal um, 
clipper screen where it's waiting for your first config. All right, so now let's go ahead and swap out the boards. Uh, the first thing we want to do is obviously unplug it. And I would take the uh, SD card out now so you don't power it on with the other board. Uh, it's just this slot right here, just pull it out. And set it off to the side. And before you power this back on, you do want to make sure that the SD card is flashed with the CB2 firmware like we just covered. Uh, you're only going to need a couple tools here, uh, really just an Allen wrench for these four screws here. And then you might need some tweezers uh, to help get the antenna off. Uh, if it's, it ends up being a problem, I'm not sure it will be a challenge yet or not. Um, then you could also pop this off too if you want as far as for the stand, but you shouldn't need to. It's also worth bringing up again that I am using the heat sink for the CB2 board, not specifically for the uh, pad seven. So it's not gonna be as flush or clean as this. It's gonna be smaller with some of it exposed, uh, similar to how uh, this is. Uh, um, Big Tree Tech said they are gonna be releasing a heat sink for the CB2 board and the pad seven. I just haven't actually seen it yet. So I don't think it's released. All right, so let's go ahead and start by taking out these four screws here. Right, then with that, the screws don't actually come all the way out. They're going to be a little bit loose fitting um, because it, it screws into a spacer underneath. But you should be able to just pull this whole piece out now. And here you can see what I was talking about where it's just like your standard motherboard screws. Those are what's actually connected on the uh, pad itself. So it looks like it left two behind. So let me go ahead and grab those. Oh, no, sorry, the spacing was only for the two. So we're gonna have to take these screws all the way off. All right, now that you got those screws off, um, I would recommend taking off these two screws to here so you can pop this off to give you better access to the board itself. It is a smaller Allen wrench, uh, so just keep that in mind. All right, it's also worth noting, if you're switching to like the CM4 board, you're gonna to wanna to adjust uh, these switches here, uh, but going from the CB1 to the CB2, uh, that's not needed. So we're just gonna pop this board up and we have to disconnect the Wi-Fi antenna here. So I'm gonna use my tweezers that I mentioned would be easier to help with that. Just kind of pull that off to the side and then the board should just slide up. So how it connects, if you look at the bottom of this board, it's just these flat pieces are kind of just going into the grooves there. So that's how we have to uh, lift it off. All right. And then there's your CB1 board. Now, if we put these boards side by side, you can see that they've got the same footprint, uh, but the chip set's different and the chip layout's different. So this won't actually be able to go on here. The issue you're gonna have with the stock heat sink, which is why they have to come up with a new one, is this piece right here sticks up a little bit higher. If it was moved back over on this side, it wouldn't be an issue, uh, but that's stopping you from putting the stock heat sink back on. So I'm gonna just use the one that I picked up off of Amazon, uh, which is this guy here. Uh, it is the same heat sink that the Big Tree Tech Pi 2 comes with. So this will end up going here. I'm gonna get everything mounted in place and then I'm gonna put that on afterwards. Um, they do say you can run it without the heat sink, but I wouldn't risk it. Just spend the extra like five or six dollars and put the heat sink on. So now let's go and put the board in place. Just gonna kind of pop in place like the other one came out. It just sits and then you push down on it. Right, and then you'll want to get the antenna plugged back in. So it's, you'll see right here, uh, it's got the antenna connector and just plug this antenna back in. And then we'll go ahead and put the screws in and then the heat sink on. So the two screws that were connected uh, to the spacers are a different size, but we should still be able to um, get those to work. But I'm gonna just do one longer one on each side and then a shorter one on each side just to even it out. Like I said, this isn't the best setup for uh, the Pad 7, um, but it will work. All right, and then you can see those four screws are in place and the board is now mounted. I know it's not the best camera angle here, um, but it's literally just the four screws and the board pops in place and the antenna, so it's not too difficult. Now let's go and put the heat sink on and then we can put the SD card in, power it on, see if everything works right 
or we're just going to put this back in place too, which I think I'll just go ahead and do, and then uh, power it on, make sure everything works right. So the heat sink is just going to sit across like this, basically covering those two chips. So just go ahead and pe peel the bottom piece off and stick it in place. Now it does leave part of the board exposed here, um, but when they actually come out with the proper heat sink, I'll probably end up swapping it out. Uh, though it will work just fine like this and then we'll put this plastic piece back in and put those two screws on All right, Now we'll put our SD card that has the new firmware on uh, Which is going to be this guy here. So it's just going to plug into the side here just like it was before and Then we should be able to power it on or plug it in and power it on all right, and as you can see, we are greeted with our normal clipper screen. So that's really all there is to it. All right guys, so that covered the process to upgrade the Pad 7 to the CB2 board. Uh, overall, the cost was relatively low and it is a nice performance boost. And uh, I think if you're using this for more than just one or two printers or doing anything outside of just running those printers, uh, it's a worthwhile upgrade. It comes with the extra memory processing power, etc. It's a lot better board overall. Like I said, it's basically the same as their Pi 2, uh, which is comparable to a Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, the Raspberry Pi 5 is still a bit more powerful, but it just came out, so it's, I guess, newer gen tech. But there's not as much support for it yet, and uh, it can be a little bit difficult to get a hold of just due to availability at times. But at the price point, the CB2 board or even the Victor Tech Pad 2, which I did the video on last time, uh, these are both great options. If you have any questions about what I covered or would like to see any other videos, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below or join us on Discord. Thanks.